ina strengthen uhusiano wetu na Mungu kwa kiwango kikubwa. Na ili umfanyie Mungu na Mungu aweze kukuamini lazima uwe kwa njia fulani. Ningependa kusema kwenu kwamba Mungu anawajua watu wote walio kwa dunia hii lakini hawaamini wote. Ili mtu afikie mahali Mungu anaweza kumwamini lazima iwe kwamba kuna namna fulani umejishughulisha mwenyewe na pia ukamba Mungu nafasi ya kukutengeneza Na leo ningependa uelewe kwamba na sio kuelewa tu ufahamu and, and you must be sure that God knows you Even before you say that amen I could wish to add another point on that. When I say that God knows you, what I actually mean is that the much God can reveal himself to you depends on how much he believes you can be reliable. the number of rooms that god can allow you to access in his house depends on the level of trust he has put in you it's like a man that stays in your house or a young lady you may not permit that lady to feast all the rooms there are particular rooms as you keep trusting her Maybe it's a young girl that has come to stay in your house. The first day you can trust her with sitting room. Even a remote for the revision. Maybe after a week you can trust her to cook for you. Or after a month. Trust keeps increasing. By the way, you can keep growing in reliability. you can keep growing god does not trust people for a moment i mean immediately it is an experiential journey it's an experiential journey so eventually you can trust this young girl with your children's room maybe in the first time she might not sleep with your children but as you keep building rapport and you keep knowing one another you may allow her to sleep with your children until such a time that you can allow her to do a few more other things that are necessary that's how god keeps growing with us He may refer to you a few things today to examine and see if you can be faithful in the few then he can trust you even for more That's why the Bible says anybody that can be trustworthy in little things can be put in charge of much It is how honest you become and how reliable you become that makes god to believe you we have faith in god but god must also believe you for him to allow you to function for him lazima mungu afike mahali anakuamini there is nothing good and better than god believing you 
I know you are used to us believing in God. Us believing in God alone does not make God give us all we need. For God to give you something to stand in for him, he must also believe in you. Can you deliver results genuinely? When you grew up, you were told a story. Kuna hadithi mriambiwa mripo kwa mna grow. Hii story inahusu ndege. Na sio ndege. It is simply our story. Mukaambiwa story kwamba wakati garika ilikuja na nu yuko kwenye safina alituma ndege mmoja aende arudishe report did you hear the story ule ndege aliaminika kwamba anaweza kuleta report kamili alileta akatuma ndege mwingine naye inasemekana akakuta na mambo fulani na ya kurudi na ndege wa mwisho ambaye tunaambiwa alitumwa ni njiwa Njiwa alienda bila kuangalia kitu kingine akarudi na ile report. That story has nothing to do with birds. It has something to do with the trust and the reliability. When you are a young person, unasema ni ndege. But as you grow up in Christianity, your eyes must learn to see what God is saying. For every word in the Bible is a communication from God to us. Every word in the Bible is a communication from God to us. God can trust you the much you can be reliable. It is your belief in him that makes the relationship strong. But belief alone does not make him to deliver. If it were the case, everybody that believes in God could be having what they need. But delivery depends on how reliable you are. And let me tell you, how you used the previous investment determines how you be given the next package you must agree with me as you are seated today that god knows the degree of our honesty and trust to the extent that you cannot take advantage of him you cannot deceive god by your crying and by your kneeling down and by your falling down and by your tears god cannot be taken advantage of you know that no matter how you cry he still knows the degree of honesty and trust you may show people that you are committed the question i'm asking you are hurt People know you are committed. Is that true? It is true that they know that you are committed. But the question I'm asking you, if the books that are before God were opened, how much could you score in terms of your commitment? People respect us. They believe that we are very strong. But what does the book of God say about your commitment? Some of these questions we rarely ask ourselves. If people were to choose a committed person, they could choose you. The question you haven't answered, if God was the one choosing, could he choose you? Because you must always realize that we are serving a God but among people. People may look at the outside.
But God looks at the inside. And it is the inside that qualifies us for eternity, not the outside. We must also know this, child of God, that God knows what he needs in a man. A man may present what he feels better. Like when we were preaching in those days, you were supposed to give your CV. Do you remember those churches where a person comes to introduce a person that preaches? Have you been to a church where there is another man who must introduce the preacher? You have been to, that, to those churches? The other man that introduces the preacher will come and say, our speaker today is Pastor Morabe. Pastor Morabe is a husband to one wife. He has been blessed with four kids. Pastor Morabe has a master's in this. He has done a degree in theology, leadership, and all that. The man that is speaking to us today is a man of experience. He has been to Rwanda. He has been to Uganda. He has been to Tanzania. He has been to Southern Sudan. He has been to Ethiopia. And as he came to us, he came all the way from Texas. So that when you are now listening, you are expecting to hear. That alone prepares you psychologically that you are going to receive something from a serious man. The question is, as serious as the man is, does God know it? Because as we are working among men, we should never lose focus that we are serving a God who does not look using men's eyes. He uses divine eyes. And all that we do on earth, we must labor to embrace the divine God, not our fellow men. Let us assist our fellow men, but remember God. Remember God. So God knows what he wants in a man. You can describe this man the way you want. But if he does not have what God wants, God is not going to connect himself with him. You can connect yourself to a man based on what you value. But you may be connecting yourself to a man that is not connected to God. There are many people in churches all over that are connected to men that bear the name pastor. But the men they are connected to, God has never connected to this man. And that's why some people go to a man by the name pastor, expecting a God of this man to do something as a miracle. And the God of this man does not do anything because God has never connected to this man. It's critical. Christianity is critical. Christianity is critical. You may be connected to a man that has already been disconnected. God has already exited. He disconnected himself from him. You are connecting at a later date. God knows what he wants in a man. There are people that God trusts more than others. Praise God. There are people that God trusts more than others. I want to read to you the book of Nehemiah. Chapter 7 and verse 2. I can read from verse 1. After the wall had been rebuilt and I had set the doors in place, the gatekeepers and the singers and the Levites were appointed. Verse 2. Nehemiah is now speaking something. It says, I put in charge of Jerusalem my brother An Anan, along with Ananiah, the commander of the citadel, because he was a man of integrity. He's explaining the reasons why 
he had put him in judge of Jerusalem. If you were with Nehemiah, do you think you could have been trusted with Jerusalem? Hello? Yes. Jerusalem is the city of God. It is not everybody that can be put in charge of the city of God. Because in the city of Jerusalem, there is a temple of God. Jerusalem by itself is a holy city. You know that? In that holy city, there is a holy temple. And inside the holy temple, there is a place they call the Holy of Holies. Inside the Holy of Holies, there is something the heart that, that represents the heart of God. So for you to be put in judge of the heart of God. You see, when God was looking at David, he said that the, city of, the, the city of Jerusalem shall all be called the city of David. Why? Because David was a man after God's own heart. In other words, the heart of God had habitation in David. Now listen to me, child of God. Nehemiah is saying, I, I put him in judge of Jerusalem, my brother and Anan. Why? Because he was a man of integrity and he feared God more than most men do. Men fear God, but this one feared God more than most men do. The extent to which you revere God determines what God puts you in charge. You are hurt. You are hurt. I know most of you, when you see me, you pretend. Even when you are having your own discussion, the moment I come, you pretend and, and, and you smile. Nobody in this church quarrels when you see me. Every moment you spot me, you turn holy. This pretense must end and we must grow to become sincere. You harass one another. You are too harsh to one another. But when you see me, you turn holy. Even when a new person comes asking for direction, even inquiring whether the pastor is around or not, you respond like you are Jesus' gatekeeper. Some of the things we do, we forget that there is a God in heaven. We do as if this church is eternal. As if eternal life is acquired here. Please understand, this is not the end. This is part of the process. You have a place you are going. As you are going to that place, you found us along the way. And you joined us so that together we walk to that place. Don't forget and imagine that we have arrived. We are still on. We are still on. And, he, and listen to me. This man was put in, in church of Jerusalem, the city of God, where the heart of God is. Because of two things, integrity and he feared God more. In other words, God knows God also compares people before he reaches assignment. He compares people. I am praying that those of you who are attending this ministration and this for the days of prayer, when this comparison is made, you qualify. I am just praying. I'm not saying that I'm the one to qualify you. I'm just praying that when God is making comparison, because are you, are you not here because you want to serve him? And more probably, you are here to be equipped so that you can offer a better service. That is my belief. Now, in the process, because we have a duty that is coming in 2021, we have millions of people that must walk from their wheelchairs. 
We have thousands of people that must recover from corona. We have thousands of people that must go HIV free. We have people that must go cancer free. We have people that we must, who are bedridden at the moment. Now, when that time comes for the task, will you be considered genuine? Can God rely on you? Can you function for him? The high degree of reliability is enhanced by us making unusual decisions, dedications, and commitments. God can rely on me more than you. But you can also attain a degree that will make God to rely on you. It's achievable. It's attainable. It's achievable. It, it is not some kind of, of favor. No. You build it over time and then God can rely on you. So you, you can attain a high degree of reliability by making unusual decisions, dedications, and commitments. If you desire to be trusted more by God, if you desire to be trusted more by God, then you must drop more of the things that you know he doesn't want and embrace more of the things you know he loves. Anyone who desires to be trusted more must be willing to drop more and be willing to embrace more. You drop the things he doesn't want and you embrace the things he wants. The advantage here is that is not a job you can do by yourself. God can help you. Now listen to this last statement before we talk to our father. Because it is God who knows what he wants in you. You may try to make yourself only to discover you are getting it all wrong. So the best thing to do is to ask for his help if you are willing. If you are willing. God can help you to become who he wants if you are willing. It is not who you want. By the way, anybody can become who he wants. You can become who you want, but not everybody can become who God wants. You can become who you want, because that is within your decision. But becoming who God wants it's spiritually divine. The only thing God is asking from you, if you are ready to offer service for him, you are ready to grow to a level that God can rely on you, that God can trust you progressively, continuously. God trusts you with 100 million and you are reliable and honest, then he trusts you with 100 billion. You know, God can make you Become who he wants if you are willing. If you are willing. You know God makes the disciples. He says, I will make you. God can make you. The reason why I say if you are willing is because he can't force you. 
He can't force you. He may show you the way, but you must be ready to walk by yourself. He will show you the way, give you the feet, give you the map, show you the direction, you start the journey. I'm saying, I'm just saying to you that God compares people before he engages them. You don't need to tell him that you are reliable and see it. He can know it. You may tell him, I am the one, but he can avoid you. Do you ever ask yourself sometimes why God assumes people that we could have actually requested him to appoint? Have you ever imagined about the story of the family of David that the people that according to us were most qualified according to him they were least qualified not that they didn't have qualifications even in the eyes of the seer you know Samuel was a seer was not a prophet he was a seer so in the eyes of the seer he saw the qualities. And he, he persuaded God to be convicted of them. But God did not. Now, the least in the eyes of the seer was the greatest in the eyes of God. Have you ever thought about a woman that came to offer some offering in the church? And Jesus was there. And the priests were there. And the priests were in the altar. And Jesus was standing closer to the altar. And people gave. And as they were giving, the priests were smiling. Because they, they were happy that people have given something today. But the woman that has never had something to give in the days before was fortunate to have something to offer that day. She has been coming offering her heart. But nobody has been recognizing that. So that day, she was fortunate to have something. The only money that she found for after a long time. She never used to have money, but that is what she found that time. She has been desiring in her heart that God one day helped me to find something to offer. So that day, fortunately, her heart had something to offer. And she offered. Can you believe me that the rest of the people that have been offering God has never seen. That was the first time God saw a person giving offering. For the first time in that church. The eyes of God are critical. If we want to be genuine believers, let us not focus more on what our fellow men see. Let us focus more on what God sees. In any case, you are not going to spend eternity with any of your fellow human beings simply because you are connected. You're going to spend eternity because you are connected to a God. I want to wish you well today. I just want to remind you that if you still want to serve God, there is a still room. God can make you to become a vessel of his kind. But just be willing. It's a day of surrender. 
I want you to tell God today that, Father, I am willing. You may not shout like other days because we are getting into a prophetic period of this church when there will be a turnaround that people will have too much money that they may forget God. That's why I'm talking to you as leaders. Because where you are headed to, where you are headed to, you might not have an idea. We are getting into another phase of this church. I have spoken it before, I think. We are getting into another phase when you may never remember how people struggle. And when you are in that phase, when you are in your house, you have your land, you have your car, you may forget that you have a responsibility of lifting those who are not where you are. People forget. But if it is God that makes you and he prepares you, and if he continues to be your friend, he will remind you. If God continues to be your friend, because as members of this church, I know majority of you, and I know you know the meaning of what I am saying. There is always a danger of forgetting when you get into the prophetic provision. Because prophecy is for profit. There is no prophecy that comes not to profit a man. That's why the Bible says anybody that receives a prophet receives a reward. That means prof- there's always prophetic reward when you get into the prophetic level. I have spoken this lest you forget because in a few days we'll be walking in abundance. In a few days, some of you have gone without anything to do for the last, for the last uh, three years or so. You have served God genuinely and honestly. The question God is asking you tonight, when he will do to you your expectation, will you still do it? Don't answer yet because you don't know. You don't know what it means when you will build a stolen building. You don't know whether you can wash for him church again or you become a big person to be washed. You will come to pass and say, man of God, now that I have money, God did not appoint you kuosha because you were too low. He appointed you because of your heart. So you cannot go and employ for God somebody to wash for him. I can see a change that is going to occur in this church beginning tomorrow morning. I I can see it. Thank you for clapping. I can see that. If we don't make our commitment tonight, When that happens, we will forget. I prayed on the mountain in those days before I knew you. I see this church changing. Thank you. But don't forget who is going to do the change. I see many of us going to have a lot of money. A lot of it. But if you are willing to be used of God, make a commitment tonight. The time that many of us have been waiting for has finally come. But you must be ready. The people that are put to be in charge of Jerusalem 
are people of integrity and who love God more than most men do. People that are put in church of Jerusalem where the heart of God is are people of integrity. Those who love God and they fear him more than most men do. Let me call upon your life and you that if you are willing to serve God in the next dispensation at whatever level that God will appoint you that you may be a man or a woman of integrity reliable that can be trusted from small to great things that God can be sure that whatever he has deposited in your hand can end up in the assignment for which it was purposed for. Can you make a commitment tonight? In a few minutes and we go home. I've spoken to your heart. And I want to salute many of you who have not given up in this journey. Sometimes things have been happening contrary to our expectation. But be ready because the training is almost over. Please lift up your hands. Mwambie Mungu kama uko tayari, just tell him Father, I am willing that you make me to become the woman you want. That you make me to become the man you want. I'm making this commitment tonight. I'm making this commitment tonight that you make me the man you want. That you make me the woman you want.